So on to our next talk. So sometimes it's not about being safe, and I'll ex let the two speakers explain all, all of that uh, in their own good time. Um, just in modernizing legacy IT systems, a big bang approach is not always the best way to go, especially in a regulated risk-averse industry. So Legal in General started out initially at a smaller scale, with MongoDB at the center of an application to deliver a vastly improved cloud-native product to their largest clients and to reduce mainframe reliance. So to hear about this, we're joined by John Mills and Tom Neville from Legal in General. John is the product owner for client servicing, where he created an agile team that has been the first to introduce this cutting-edge cloud-native technology anywhere in Legal in General. And Tom is the agile delivery manager responsible for delivering these improvements and value and bringing about significant modernization of their IT real estate. So, as before, questions at the end, hopefully we'll have some time. Um, just put up your hands, because I need to get the microphone towards you, and there'll be a slide at the end with the QR code for feedback and survey. So, without further ado, Tom, John, welcome. Thank you. So I trust you can all hear me. Is that okay? All coming through, even at the back? Yep. Good. Thumbs up. So yeah, so as, as the introduction says, we're here to talk about our experience implementing MongoDB into our organization where we've used it to modernize our mainframe databases. But why the title? So I'm a big fan of Parks and Rec. I don't know if any of you have seen the show, um, but uh, John is as well a fan. Um, I think I introduced him into it, but probably one of my terrible influences along the way. But my favourite character is, is Ron Swanson, and that's because I share a number of similar interests and life philosophies with him, one of which is woodwork. Now, I have absolutely no formal carpentry training, um, so my projects have originally been limited by my key stakeholder, my wife, to... Things really inside, not in view, so shelvings and cupboards, a bit of stuff in the garden. I was allowed to build a home office for myself, again, not for public consumption, or her personal favourite, not in our house at all, so at friends' houses, helping them out with tasks over there. But over time, I've probably built up a decent, probably pushing it, average body of work that has helped in building her confidence through also my skills have developed over time, my tooling has improved, and you know I've done a lot of reading, a lot of YouTubing, and a lot of watching some of my uh, actual friends that are skilled in this profession and do it properly uh, to get along the way. So eventually I've been allowed to do some stuff inside the house and some quite big projects in too. But one of those this year was a custom designed bunk bed for our three-year-old daughter. So that's pretty precious to us, uh, and that's, that'll become important why that's important to legal in general as well. But it just goes to show it's, it's pretty cliche, but ultimately any woodwork starts with a solid frame, and you build it. And you say, anyone can say you can do that, but you've got to start building it and testing it out as you go, which is where the sort of approach came with in legal in general. Just incidentally, one of the other things I share with Ron is a hatred for lying and skim milk which is water lying about being, being milk. But I'm not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how you build stakeholder confidence to then build and, well, if you keep building it with deliveries, successful deliveries, you get that confidence for them to then trust you with their mission critical processes and data. Skim milk can wait. So a little bit about who we are. Um, we've had a little bit of an intro. Uh, I'm Tom Neville. I've had a background in Te various technology roles over the last decade or so, uh, working in consulting, financial services, and telecoms, where I head up what we call in legal and general at the moment, the client value stream. So that's delivering value for our, our workplace clients. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what that means later. My role is really that bit in between the business and the technology, hopefully enabling us to take what the business needs and then deliver that getting rid of blockers along the way and enabling the brilliant teams that I work with to deliver that value and deliver that technology 
for our business. And we've got two of those brilliant people here today. I'm going to hand over to John to introduce him a little bit about himself. Hi everyone, I'm uh, John Mills and I'm the product owner for a couple of the initiatives we're here to talk to you about today. Um, I've worked at Legal in General for over 17 years in a number of roles delivering some key software projects. Um, thank you so much for having us. Um, we look forward to sharing our use case um, and um, yes, so we look forward to sharing our use case, that's the most important thing. Um, I've also got um, over here Pecha Mutu Ayan Perumal, better known to us as Mutu. Um, he's our solution architect, stroke engineering lead. At the end, when we have some questions, if you have any, Mutu will help us out if there's anything that goes a little bit below the surface of where Tom and me operate. Thank you. Thank you. So a little bit about where we work. So legal in general, we're one division of that in, in terms of legal in general workplace. Now. That business is quite significant to legal in general, but sort of 10, 15 years ago, we had a book size of a thousand schemes with 200,000, we say, members across that book. And that has grown to the, the numbers that you'll, you'll see in a minute. A couple of reasons for that. There was the change of legislation to introduce auto enrollment. So more people are having pensions because they're being enrolled. Probably a number of you here today have a pension with your employer. Uh, and as a result of that, they're contributing, but also their employers are contributing. So in theory, everyone's a winner. You're going to be having more prosperous retirements as a result of that. And then the other reason is obviously because of Legal and General's brilliant products, propositions and services that we offer. Now, we've scaled that to the numbers you see in front of you. So we operate and administer about 13,000 active paying schemes, we've got about 17 across the book, and then that's now 4.6 million members. That's actually 40% of Legal and General's customer base. And importantly for this presentation in this room is just in the client servicing area alone, which is where we work, that's about 40 million monthly updates, which are a combination of transaction and charges that are going through our system. No, I'm trying to move on. Oh. It's not, slide is not moving. There we go. Right. Cool. Thank you. Here you jump. Um, so, as we can say, life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop once in a while and look around, you might miss it. So, with this continued success and continued growth, we set ourselves a challenge because we needed to make sure that we kept pace, didn't burden, and continued to modernize our IT estate. With that in mind, we had to sort of think about how do we replicate mainframe data in and transform it for our customer needs. Setting ourselves the sort of four key questions for looking at the opportunity where we were going. So how do we access it in a highly available environment? How do we replicate it in near real time? How do we handle our intensive high volume workflows that I've talked about earlier? And how do we meet our consumer needs by presenting that data in a way that they need, they need it? But before we go into that, and John will tell us a bit more about that, I'm going to ask a little bit of audience participation. Now, it's not too strenuous, hopefully, but we are getting towards lunch. We're in a bit of sort of the graveyard shift, I think, for the timing. So if you're all indulged me, please, if you could take your dominant hand, so the hand that you write with, in my case, it's my right hand, but I'm not saying you have to raise your right hand. Come on, raise your right hands out there, or your left hands, or whichever your dominant hand is, and the person next to you is not going to tickle you, I promise. Okay, now, if you could take your index finger on that dominant hand, and then draw either an uppercase or a lowercase, sorry, uppercase or capital E, on your forehead, please. I'm going to try and slick look out to see what you're doing. Draw it on your forehead, yep. Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, cool. Right, now, there's no right or wrong answer, but that the way you've drawn that might tell you a little bit more about yourself. So the, the words, those of you that I could see who drew the E facing towards yourself, so backwards to myself and John, you're gonna go significantly further in your careers and lives than John and I. Um, you have those traits that are successful leaders and CEOs generally have, that sort of single tunnel vision. 
But those of you that drew it facing us, which is the way that John and I drew it, so the, uh, someone else would see it, that sort of shows you that you've got empathy. And again, why is that important? Well, we needed to understand our, in our roles anyway, and you know, we've got some of the technical, John's got a much more technical understanding than, than myself, but we actually need to understand our key stakeholders in order to get the buy-in. And we need to understand where they're coming from in terms of their beliefs, their positions, and their thoughts to leverage that to get the buy-in we need to do. Now, if I look at my woodworking example, I would say, probably confidence of this room, that I know that stakeholder relatively well, my wife. But with legal in general, the execs and the senior people there, it's a little bit more challenging. And also, being in a highly regulated FCA risk-averse industry, we had to think about how we were going to approach the, the challenge that we set ourselves and take the opportunity to modernize. So the key thing we thought was, how do we do something that, again, a bit like my woodworking, is a bit insulated, but actually hugely critical to our, our business? So we've taken our main, basically our main application that our clients interact with uh, and our internal administrators. It'll eventually have about 20,000 users and, uh, administrating on it uh, as we roll this out over the coming years. And chose the opportunity to modernize that and built, which John will talk more about. We, you, leveraging Mongo at the start of this, we've built a new product and application that has, is completely cloud native and also modernizes the way that our schemes and our, our administrators will interact with the service, building a brand new product that is far superior to what we have today. But it's important because that use case, it, again, it's a bit like the examples I gave earlier, but it's, it is the cornerstone of our business, but it is insulated enough that we weren't gonna be knocking onto some of the other stuff. And that's what's been known today as, it's called My Scheme Updates. And again, John will talk more about that. But also from this, one of the key, some, more, some of the key components have been taken out to be leveraged for other applications. So because we've built something successfully, we've built that stakeholder confidence and we've built something that can then be leveraged out for the wider business. Now that's gonna be expanded to be what we're calling an operational streaming service or an operational streaming platform that we're going to use for other applications for legal in general to scale mission critical processes by reducing workload on the mainframe. It's going to do the pre preparing, transforming and really the, all of the heavy lifting of that data that those applications will need. It's also taken us from working traditionally, I don't know if any of you worked in financial services, but Waterfall, we started Agile um, and now we're moving to sort of the scaled Agile framework or SAFE. Putting platform thinking in there as well. So we've really got two platform teams that are coming out there. And the other thing we're doing is really treating IT as a business, which is very modern for our financial services. And this is being moved across the workplace area. So really those platforms should be building stuff that those streamlined teams can consume, either APIs or services that they can consume as we go forward. And the other thing we're doing is building out our engineering teams increasing the skills and technologies that we have in-house across a number of areas. And that's obviously a very exciting time to be part of legal in general. I think it'd be sensible if you want to come and seek us out and ask us about that afterwards, that would be great. But that really explains the sort of the, the how. I'm now going to hand over to John, who's going to explain about the what, which is the more interesting part. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Tom. Um, Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you uh, a little bit about how we've addressed some of the challenges that we've set ourselves. Um, in order to do that, I'm hopefully gonna answer the question of why we chose MongoDB, which is one of the reasons why we're up here. Um, but in order to do that, I'm just gonna replay some of the questions that we set ourselves at the beginning of the project that would help us to decide whether we were a success or not. And it will help explain some of the choices that we made and ultimately, why MongoDB? So how do we get access to mainframe data in a highly available environment? Something that we've been longing for for a long period of time. How do we replicate 
data in near real time. It doesn't cut it to have a general ETL tool with a once a week refresh. The data needs to be in line with what is happening on the mainframe. How do we handle our specific intensive high volume workloads? Legal in general looks after many millions of policies. We receive millions and millions of updates every single day and we need to be able to handle all of those updates and keep that near real time. And most importantly, it's not just good enough to replicate what is in our mainframe. We want to be able to meet our consumer needs by presenting the data how they need it. So all new initiatives, all new business applications can ask for the data how they want it to be um, served up. So early on in our um, exploration, MongoDB was chosen very early on, and that was due to a number of key points. The highly available nature of MongoDB Atlas Cloud um, means that our data will be available to the applications 24 by 7, 365 days a year without fail. And the direct compatibility with AWS was also desirable due to our other investment in native AWS technology. But it doesn't mean that the ability to deploy MongoDB into other clouds won't be of interest to us in the future. But for now, AWS is where we're, we're focused. Inbuilt security features within MongoDB mean that our data is protected at all points, whether in transit or at rest, which is incredibly important for a company such as Legal & General that operates within a financial services industry. Being able to implement KMS keys, with a reg which are regularly rotated, is a real plus for us and an absolute must for us to be able to use this service. As I mentioned, we want to be able to serve data how our consumers want it. So not just replicating what we've got in the mainframe, transforming it. And MongoDB's object-orientated design fits that nicely. And the Atlas, the Atlas cloud service provider relieves us of the burden of having to manage a complex infrastructure and instead lets us focus on what we do best, which is deliver great products. And a fifth one, which I didn't put down in the slides, but was very key to us when we're onboarding new technology, was will we have access to the right expertise to help us on our journey for implementing MongoDB? And it's, it was a really rewarding experience working with Naresh first and Danielli at MongoDB Consultants, who really set us up for success. Um, as we implemented the product for the first time. So we've chosen the platform MongoDB to host, and host our mainframe data. So now the big question was, how do we replicate our data in MongoDB? And the first thing that we built and we are using is developing an event streaming platform. The first component is click replicate which is a log-based change data capture solution, which ingests the normal mainframe log files and does so in what we call a low footprint way. So memory uh, MSU consumption within the mainframe is something we live with on a daily basis. Being able to take a tool with a really low footprint, such as Click Replicate, met our needs to get the data outside of the mainframe. Our second part is what we call our message streaming platform, and that is a combination of confluent Kafka topics and a managed MongoDB sync connector, which manages and streams all of those log files in real time in the many millions into our MongoDB collection. So that has solved the problem of how we go from the mainframe into MongoDB. So from there, we need to be able to replicate our mainframe in a like-for-like -like way to construct um, all of the mainframe tables that we are ingesting. And we are using AWS Batch Framework for the initial load for the hundreds of millions of rows to onboard all of that data. And then AWS Microservice Framework hosted in ECS containers, um, which enables us to create what we call our reflection layer, which is the near real-time copy of our mainframe tables. And then finally, the added value 
again using additional AWS batch and AWS microservices hosted in ECS, we will then transform the data from the mainframe structures into what we call the highly consumable customer views. And it is those that are first use case, My Scheme Updates, which is a pension administration platform uses to drive all of the customer journeys and gets all of the performance improvements that we're looking to do. <clears throat> so our primary goal was to, as Tom mentioned, to start small and prove this pattern for our first use case, which is My Scheme Updates. And that was always our primary goal. But in, a, in the background, our secondary goal and our medium term goal was how can we grow this product into a platform so that all future LNG initiatives can also take advantage of this platform? And most importantly, how will MongoDB grow with us to make this, this product a platform? <clears throat> it's worth pointing out that our initial our initial um, implementation, my scheme updates, ingested just 45 mainframe tables, which is made up of 500 million rows of data and can have up to 15 million updates per day coming through the system. But in order for future initiatives to take advantage of it, we've needed to build some key framework principles and, uh, and characteristics to grow the product. And the most important thing is we should be able to add new tables via configuration, not spending large amounts of time to, to when new consumers come on board with new requirements that mean we need to bring that data from the mainframe. So we've implemented a capability to add new tables in a real simple way. And a, a good example is our first use case after my scheme updates, we'll grow it by a further 21 mainframe tables add another 350 million rows and roughly another 7 million updates. So this platform that we're building will grow for the future. Another really tough challenge that we faced with this pattern was when you're receiving millions of updates, inserts, updates, deletes, not, our key goal is to be able to replicate the mainframe data but then transform it into the, the customer optimized views. In order to do that, we got to, we've got to handle a large number of updates every single day. And in order to understand when to trigger our downstream processing, we've had to implement what we call noise configuration. So at each table level, we're able to define through configuration which columns are meaningful. So that if we receive an update to those columns, we can trigger our downstream chain streams and create those customer optimized views. And then anything that, is of that we class as irrelevant, that is noise. And again, being able to grow our platform so that we can handle new tables and define what is noise is really important that we can do it simply. And we've been able to implement that in our first phase. A, a quick example is it our first use case, my scheme updates. 96% of updates that we're receiving through our platform from the mainframe is considered noise. So in order to get to the 4% of updates, we need to handle large numbers of volume to be able to replicate the tables in mainframe, but then quickly, make, qu quickly class it as noise. So noise configuration is something we've spent a lot of time trying to implement efficiently. We've had to grow our existing servers within MongoDB. We've grown from an M40 to an M60 recently, and the number of clusters that we're implementing will grow as we onboard new consumers. And it's important to, it's important to say that the real ease of being able to spin up, spin down, grow um, our clusters is a real big, big win for us especially working in an old school industry where it takes months and months to be able to acquire a server. So Atlas is a real game changer for us. It's also worth pointing out that while we haven't, we've got away with it in the first phase, sharding is, not in, the too, is, is in the not too distant future. 
We've got away with it with our first use case, but we know in 2023, it's something we're gonna to need to face and we'll no, no doubt be um, reaching out to our MongoDB consultants to help us out with that. And then finally, our new consumer specific views. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be growing clusters to support the new um, initiatives within legal in general. We have a really important government initiative called the Pension Dashboard, which will locate lost pensions. We also have a new internal administration platform that will take advantage of this platform. And really, we have an unlimited number of use cases that can really take advantage of the pattern that we're implementing here. And we're really excited to see it grow. Um, I'm just gonna now quickly show you a video of our first uh, application, um, My Scheme Updates, which will just give you a flavor of some of the work that we're doing at Legal in General. Hopefully this is gonna kick off the video. Here we go. So My Scheme Updates is a new application which benefits from tailor-made consumer-optimized data views hosted in MongoDB. This client application will be used by thousands of pension schemes across the United Kingdom. The core processes are to transfer pension information across to legal in general as part of the regular payroll cycle. MongoDB underpins all of the reimagined customer journeys that we've implemented. This journey shows a user uploading a contribution file. This can consist, up to, consist of up to 250,000 employees for the schemes that we administer. Using MongoDB and consumer optimized views built solely for my scheme updates, we have seen we have improved processing times of our upload and validation of those 250,000 records by over 96%. This is a game changer for our users who will spend less time administering the pension schemes and will be able to complete, our, complete the administration within a single session should they wish. The consumer specific views provides additional contextual information which enhances the user experience and importantly increases the level of self-service, which for legal in general is really important to reduce the level of support that we need to provide the thousands of customers and the thousands of users on a daily basis. And it's just worth mentioning again, we have many other legal in general initiatives <coughs> that are starting to take advantage of this platform. So that is uh, it for us. Um, we want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to us. Um, it's greatly appreciated. We'll be around, so if anyone has any questions afterwards, um, please feel free to uh, say hello or come and ask us the questions with Mutu in the front row as well. Um, I think we may have used most of the time, so <laughs> questions-wise on here might not be a... Uh, no, oh, that was Time. excellent, John and Tom. Thank you very much. A round of applause. We could probably squeeze one question in if there's any questions from the audience for, for either of them. Anybody? It's going to be delaying lunch, isn't it? That's Here, all. well done. Yeah. Tom. Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Good. Um, so how are you going to go the other way? How are you going to update the mainframe from the Mongo database? So at the moment... Um, we're really focusing on read-only workloads. So a lot of the first use cases are really, how do we get access to that data? Um, so, so ultimately, it is not a bi it's not a bi-directional update at the moment. Um, it's not to suggest that people within the organization see this as a opportunity to get off the mainframe. What we're trying to do, though, focus on is getting access to that data to deliver those meaningful customer journeys at the moment. Um, but it is definitely something that will be tackled at some point. But in all honesty, it's not going to be this set of components that will enable us to do that. Okay, so I don't want to interfere with your lunch. Lunch will be on outside. It's still gonna recommence in this room at the same time, 1.40.
Um, so please come back in then to this room or to the other two rooms, whichever sessions you want to attend. Thank you all very much. Don't forget, there is Ask the Expert sessions out in the main expo hall as well too. But for fitting in both Parks and Recreation and Ferris Bueller into their presentation, I think John and Tom deserve a round of applause for that. Thank you so much.